So early in the season, we covered Paulo's first five games and broke down what we were seeing from him. But now 21 games into his rookie year, we're a quarter of the way through the season and I once stated that he is not a normal rookie we're used to seeing and now I want to say he is officially certified. Coming through the lane slamming at home with force like this is just a second nature for Paulo and so are these fantastic slams off the break and it's best that you stop him before he gets ahead of steam or else Paulo is going to detonate right on you. The last time I personally saw a rookie come into the league and cause this much damage and be as versatile as Paulo was when young LeBron stepped on the scene and displayed to everyone that he was born for the bright lights. For Bancaro, he has done just that, performing at a high level on the court making the most out of his time on the floor. Paulo carries a huge load for this team and he's doing it very well. He has the highest usage rate of all rookies at 27.9% and the third highest true shooting percentage at 55%. When we compare these stats directly with LeBron's during his rookie year, LeBron had a usage rate of 27.6% and a true shooting percentage of 48%. Now I know we're just getting things going this season and LeBron's sample size is a whole year, but if Paolo continues to stay consistent throughout the year, we can see some great numbers from him in his rookie year. When you have a 6'10 forward who comes straight into the league with pure confidence, the perfect size, and the ability to be a solid playmaker for either himself or his teammates, this is a definite sign of a generational talent. I mean, you tell me, out of all the players in this year's draft, would Paolo be your pick? Looking very dominant this season so far when going to score, the bulk of Paolo's shots come from inside the restricted area where he converts nearly 65% of his 114 field goal attempts. Not being easily knocked off his route to the basket, Bancaro is physical with his takes off the dribble and tends to initiate the contact before the defense and it gains him the advantage. Receiving the pass off the inbound, Paolo immediately attacks the paint and bumps the defender off of him once arriving, spins back towards the rim and slams it powerfully over the defense. When you see your rookie going to the rim with this much aggression, you have no choice but kinda have a smirk on your face. As he builds on his frame throughout his NBA career, he will only get more explosive and stronger which will make these takes even more dangerous to contest. Although these dunks are exciting and will get you off your feet, but the way Paolo is able to finish gracefully with his left hand off the glass regardless of the defense is truly special. There's times where a rookie coming into the league can tend to shy away from attacking with one hand or the other, but you don't really see this from Bancaro. He's more than comfortable with either hand and he can go finish over you. Quite dangerous on the break like I stated earlier, Paolo takes it right into four Raptors defenders, pushes past Siakam, and stays strong through the contact from Boucher to finish the and one. Then against the Clippers, Paolo gets past Batum with ease and goes right at the seven footer in Zubak to put two on the board. Bancaro loves driving to the left and you will definitely see it a lot in his game. It doesn't matter if it's over the trees or if it's over smaller defenders, he can take it off the dribble with his off hand and go get the bucket inside. Having this versatility to go strong to the basket either way will make the defense play you more honest rather than forcing you one way which helps your offensive game a ton. Not only is Paolo comfortable and strong enough to take it off the dribble either way, but he's tying together a quick handle at times to get past the defense and before you know it, Bancaro's at the rim for two. I mean just look, he simply makes Klay Thompson's defense look low level while stringing together this through the legs into the crossover past him and then just muscles his way into the paint to go place it off the glass. Gordon stood no chance staying in front of Bancaro here as he snatches back hard, pauses for a split second and ferociously crosses through the legs right at Gordon getting past him to go throw it down with two hands. Being 6'10 and having any form of quickness is a huge advantage already, but then when you add in the ability to handle the ball at a decent level as well, it's like a game breaker. On 11 drives per game, Paolo is attempting nearly 5 shots at the rim and is 50% on his chances. If I'm a head coach, well this is a promising sign in my eyes and I would love to see him getting downhill as much as he can. The confidence with the handle is so key to why he can get down so great and Big Carroll can also be creative with his finishes. It's quite easy to just lean on pure athleticism when you're gifted with a ton of it, but when you learn to add in some finesse with it, that's when you totally can separate from others. From throwing in euros to get around Giannis to finish the and one, to floating past Barnes while using the up and under windmill layup, and then to take the bump on the gather, switch hands make contestants and stay finished, it's honestly so many ways Paolo can put the ball in the bucket once he is headed towards the paint. The quickness he has allows him to blow past slower bigs match with him and then the strength grants him the ability to muscle right past the smaller defenders to lay it in over the top. So either way it's like Paolo has an advantage on the court and it's all about him learning how to exploit the game when he's out there. You can tell the defense is already having a hard time stopping him as he's getting up 8.5 free throws a game and is converting them at a 75% rate. 
Now, I'm not saying it's the best percentage at the line as it can definitely improve, but for starting out, this is a great sign. One, because he can put the opposing team's bigs or guards in foul trouble, which will then make his drives a little easier. And then second, since he isn't the worst free throw shooter, I can see him getting up to 80% and this can leak directly into his mid-range shooting. As much as Paolo is a dominant slashing threat, his shot creation ability isn't looking too bad. When in the mid-range area, Bancaro looks very comfortable operating off either the bounce or the catch and doesn't hesitate to get it up when he's open. Paolo's height and release point on his jumper already makes it difficult to block him and being laser focused on the court, the contest hardly even bothers him. You can see it on display as Bancaro dumps this pass off to Wagner and after the block, Paolo gets it back, takes one dribble into the pull up and unfazed he knocks it down from 18 feet over Boucher. These pull ups come from various ways all over the court, whether Paolo comes off the screen, ties together a combo to create space, or simply rises up over the defender backpedaling, Bencaro is more than confident to get into his shot when he is left open, or even sometimes when he's still contested. Getting into this pull up versus the Mavs, Christian Wood is assuming Hampton is setting the screen so he looks that way, and Paolo fakes him with his in and out as well, and as he starts backpedaling, Paolo pulls up right over him. Since the defense is so aware of his ability to put pressure on them going downhill, they'll tend to back up and pretty much dare Bancaro to shoot it, and although he isn't a mid-range assassin or anything, he can still make the defense pay. He uses that handle to get the space needed to get the shot off, and you see it greatly with these side steps and step backs that Paolo uses. With Richards on him, Paolo just sizes him up with his through the legs cross, directly into a hard cross through the legs to then step back, creating tons of space and drops it in from 21 feet. You can even throw forwards with quicker feet at him like Randall, and Paolo will still beat them with a sidestep and knock down the bucket. I wouldn't really say Paolo is shifty with his handle or anything just yet, but it's strong enough to get to where he wants to. Sometimes the defender can get a good contest even after the move is done, but Paolo is still able to sink the jumper. You can see it as he sidesteps here, he baits Mobley into jumping with the up fake and puts two on the board with the foul to go shoot another one at the line. Against Siakam, he used that patented through the legs into the step back and although Pascal steps back a little, he still gets a great contest on the jumper and Paolo says it's just too easy, let's play ball. He's never really too sped up or forces the shots up wildly, you know, maybe a couple of times, but for the most part, Bencaro picks his places wisely and goes and executes. To me, it works best when he puts the defenders in the post and takes his time, then spins off them to knock it down. These fades have to be my favorite aspect of his mid-range because if he focuses more on this part, it can make him that much more harder to cover in this area. With an outstanding defender and Andrew Wiggins on him, Paolo easily gets to that low block area, stays patient with the pivot, spins off the left shoulder, and makes this fade look easy. Now I'm not sure how you feel about Paolo operating in his mid-range area, but for me it's a great sign and will hopefully leak out to his three-point shooting. Only shooting 27% from deep on nearly 4 attempts per game, Paolo isn't necessarily a floor spacer for this team. Now does that mean he freezes up when he's granted an open 3? Nah, not at all. Paolo doesn't mind shooting it when he's open, and sometimes he will even throw a combo at a defender before pulling up, but he's not really draining them at a great rate. Confidence is key in his league though, and as long as he doesn't shy away from working on extending his range, then this is something I'm really not too worried about just yet. Out of all the ways Paolo can score the ball when on the floor, it brings a lot of attention his way when he's on the court. Amongst all rookies, Bancaro is the third in assists per game at 3.9, and I know you might say, well that's not that much. Well when we go just a little deeper, Paolo is first in potential assists amongst all rookies at nearly 8 per game, and third in assist points created at 10.3. So as this Magic team improves as a whole, we will see Paolo's assist numbers climb even more. He's already finding guys cutting from every angle on the floor, just keeping his eyes up scanning the court. Last night versus Boston, he had two clean reads as here he pushes towards the middle of the floor and right as the defense is closing in on him, Paolo is already dishing this to Wagner on the cut for the thunderous slam. Then later in the game, he sets up the other brother in Franz Wagner with his dart straight down the middle for the lay right at the basket. He can also find his open teammates everywhere around the perimeter and just has this all around sharing nature to his game. We definitely aren't far from seeing Paolo averaging 5-6 to six assists per game as he learns to control the offense more and this will only help the magic even more. This team is filled with tons of talent, it is truly ridiculous. So many guys can step on the court and contribute in their own way while still playing for one another and that's what makes this team so special. Paolo Bencaro was a perfect rookie to put around this group of guys and with everyone being so young, it allows him to grow with one another. Paolo is a special talent who is officially certified in my eyes and will be a force in this league.
Let me know what you all think below, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like before you head over to watch this Bobo analysis or this Franz Wagner and a little bonus Bobo analysis as well. I thank you all for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.